The events will take place in Boston April 23rd and 24th, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Historians say as many as one and a half million Armenians were killed by the Ottoman government in what many consider the first genocide of the 20th century. Boston was among the main destinations for refugees from Armenia, and their suffering is marked by the Heritage Park on the Rose Kennedy Greenway. To tell us about the history and the local commemoration are two guests, the chairman of the Armenian National Committee of Eastern Massachusetts, it's Dihran Kalijian and the co-chair of the Armenian Assembly of America and the Massachusetts Genocide Commemoration, Anthony Barsamian. Uh, thank you both very much for being with us. Thanks. I want to start with uh, Dihran uh, about the history. Uh, I mean, there, there are some viewers who maybe they heard a little bit about this. This does not get as much attention as what happened during World War II, but, but tell us about the story. Sure. The Ottoman Empire was a multi-ethnic empire that was on its last legs when they decided to join Germany and Austria-Hungary the on their same side in World War I. And once that began, they had their first reverses. They decided to take advantage of the cover of war to eliminate the Armenian population that had been there for three millennia. So starting in 1915, they deported the entire Armenian population, even those thousands of miles from the war front, into the deserts of Syria, murdering them along the way. And in the course of that year and then subsequent years, a million and a half Armenians were killed and the entire civilization was uprooted, driven out. And since then we've seen the destruction of the uh, Armenian culture uh, that had been on the Armenian plateau. Now I think one excuse I think that, that, that's come from the Turks in this is that, well, this is a population on the border of the Russian Empire. And, uh, you know, Russia was, a, was an enemy of uh, the Ottoman Empire. So, you know, they were gonna feel some heat. Certainly, but the thing you have to keep in mind is they were Armenians on both sides, and in fact, the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire joined the, Armenian ar joined the Ottoman army, and in fact, that's why they were so easily eliminated. They were disarmed, and eventually all the young men were murdered by the, by the army they had joined, leaving the women, children, and elderly defenseless. The Armenians in the Russian Empire joined the Russian army because they were Russian citizens, and that's what you might expect. And so this, th there is this uh, ongoing denial campaign where Turkey says, well, you know, it was, a, it was an uprising. Uh, but there's no evidence of that. I mean, the, the, it's, it's very flimsy, and it's, it's essentially a cover, which is actually very similar to what Sudan does today in covering up the uh, massacres in Darfur and the genocide in the Nuba Mountains by saying, well, we're putting down an insurgency. The tactics are very similar, and they borrow from each other. A Anthony, uh, uh, there's some very interesting flashpoints around this. Uh, uh, Pope Francis uh, said, uh, you know, he says, we, we have to recognize this, and he got a lot of blowback. Yeah, I, I had the privilege of being in Rome last Sunday with the Pope and with the Armenian church leaders. Uh, it was an amazing mass. Most of the mass was done in Armenian, in classical Armenian. And one thing he said, which I think is, is the message to uh, the government of Turkey, is this is an open wound that's bleeding, and we need to bandage that wound. We need to bind that wound. Uh, it was a very, very uh, paternal message, the Holy Father basically saying, we need to bind the wound and deal with genocide. And he also called on world leaders to speak the truth about the Armenian genocide. Dikran, you know, it's, it's well known the Turkish government has a hard time with this version of, of, of history, and yet it's widely accepted here, I think. Um, so so what, why is it important to, to try to, I guess, I guess, to get more agreement about the history? Sure. Well, I mean, essentially every genocide and Holocaust scholar agrees that, of course, this was a genocide. But there are enough others who basically are being funded directly or indirectly by Turkey to, to try to create a false controversy, much as you get a false controversy about things like uh, climate change. Uh, and it's, it's very pernicious because the part of the problem is the United States is a major, major battleground for that. So here in the U.S., even here in Massachusetts, when uh, a curriculum was passed for the, for the schools and our, our public schools, the, there was actually a front group for Turkey that sued the Massachusetts Department of Education saying, why don't you have Turkish denialist websites as part of your uh, curriculum guide? And of course, it got thrown out on one level, another level, all the way to the Supreme Court. But just doing those kinds of lawsuits creates a chilling effect for other states not to consider teaching the truth about the Armenian Genocide. Uh, Anthony, what about the celebrations in, in Boston? Uh, why is it so important to have something in this city? 
Well, you know, Massachusetts and specifically Boston has a very, very good record. I mean, governors throughout the last uh, 20, 30 years have fully uh, affirmed the Armenian Genocide. And um, what we have is, is a very simple yet very moving uh, service at Trinity Church in Copley Square where the Cardinal, the Greek Metropolitan, uh, Jewish Islamic faiths are coming together with the Mass Council of Churches and we're going to uh, commemorate the Armenian Genocide on the 23rd, the night that the genocide victims are going, uh, were becoming saints in Armenia. The Armenian Church as a class is going to saint the uh, 1.5 million of those who, who were an, uh, annihilated at the, in the genocide. Then on the 24th, which is Friday, next Friday, uh, Governor uh, Baker, outside the State House, will address the Armenian community together with the entire community of Massachusetts. And there'll be a, a solemn procession down to the Holocaust Memorial, to the Armenian Genocide Memorial, where within the park on the Greenway, uh, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Deval Patrick, uh, former governor, uh, and Mayor Walsh and, and others, the, our senators will be there. Uh, Senator Markey, I believe, is also gonna be there. We'll commemorate the genocide. And then that night is a very uplifting uh, youth and young persons presentation where they're going to do a multimedia presentation in the park that runs to about 10 p.m. Nick Brown, how, how does it feel for you to see this recognition from outside the community? Uh, outside the Armenian community, that is. How does it feel? It, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, 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 very, uh, it's w very welcome because the Armenian community haven't fought for almost 100 years now the denial by the Turkish government having states like Massachusetts, having uh, countries around the world. Unfortunately, the Congress Although it's passed two genocide resolutions, it hasn't gone through the Senate, it's very welcoming to have the Pope and everyone else finally co you know, come on board and say, Turkey, it's time for you to stand up, for your, you know, stand up to your history, to acknowledge what happened, that you know, a prior government, but one that you've taken the benefit from, the lands from, the, uh, the patrimony of, you have to take the good with the bad. And if that was the foundation of the Tur Republic of Turkey, was so, you have to also take responsibility and uh, provide justice for the victims of the Armenian Genocide and for the descendants and do something to take care of. So it's, it's very welcoming to have so many countries and so many governments now around the world telling Turkey you have to do the right thing. Right. Anthony, um, I guess the other lesson here uh, is, is that, you know, judging from the reaction to the Pope, even from the Italian government, is, is that uh, uh, there are people who are, who are looking at this and saying, well, maybe we shouldn't be too hard on the Turks. We want them to join the EU. We want to all get along and be nice. Uh, how do you feel when you see that? So that's interesting. Uh, you know, the Pope made that statement. We, need, we have a, a wound that is bleeding, and we need to stop the bleeding. Immediately, the Turkish president comes out with a statement uh, admonishing and basically threatening the Pope saying you should not have done that and and really a direct threat well if you're not guilty of something then why are you being so defensive and threatening so what happens with Turkey is anytime somebody talks of the Armenian genocide Turkey then pushes back so hard that people don't want to get into what they consider controversy as Dikran has said now here in Boston very interesting and I'm gonna make a prediction I think the people of Turkey will get ahead of the government you're starting to see young Turks and and, and the, the community here in Boston young and old come to us saying we're sorry this was a genocide how do we help you so this is starting to change you're starting to see the dialogue change slowly because they're starting to realize that the, there's a lie out there that's been uh, around for a hundred years and I think they're tired of hearing that lie. Jikran, you also have some more information both about the observance and the history online. Is there uh, any way we can tell our viewers about how to find that? Uh, if on the event itself, well, on the lies, actually, one, one place they can look is www.armeangenocidereparations.info, where we actually, uh, we have, there's a new report that came out that actually analyzes what happened and how it can be remedied, what the future remedy can be. And we have a separate website uh, Tony can give as far as for, uh, to find out what the events are going to be in Boston. Sure. It's, it's uh, uh, remember1915.org. So New England, N-E, remembers, 1915.org. There are so many great websites out there, though. I really recommend that if people are interested, they look at these websites. There's so much documentation on the Armenian Genocide, and that's where we are today. We, we're sort of out of the recognition uh, and, and more into looking at Turkey and saying, okay, Turks, what are you going, and the Turkish government, not the people necessarily, but the Turkish government, what are you going to do to uh, remedy the situation? Thank you.